In the last couple of videos, we showed that there's no net force on a dipole when it's placed in an external electric field, and we showed that the electric field does apply a torque. We now want to calculate the change in the potential energy of the dipole as it changes from one orientation to another. That is, we want to find the negative of the force of the work done by the electric field upon the dipole as it changes its orientation, because the work done by a conservative force, which the electric field is, is the negative change in potential energy. In this problem, we're going to start with the dipole at 90 degrees with respect to the electric field. This is to make the math and the formula just a little bit easier. Remember, change is all that we really have for an electric in for calculating the potential energy, but I can choose any reference point of zero potential energy I want, and I'm going to choose it to be when the dipole is 90 degrees with respect to the electric field to make the formula look a little easier. You'll see the formula is easier in, in a little bit when I do that. And then I'm going to let it rotate to some arbitrary angle theta, like so. Now, that angle is gets larger, theta gets larger as it rotates around. Right here it's 90 degrees. That's the opposite normally the way you're doing polar numbers, so I have to be careful of that when I do these vectors in a minute. When you do it like this, if this is x and this is y, then z is out of the page by the right hand rule. But when you rotate the black vector around this direction clockwise, then by the right hand rule, the direction of that rotation is in minus z or minus k hat. Let's calculate the work. Well, the change in potential energy, as I said, is equal to the minus the work conservative, and that's equal to minus the integral from the initial to the final orientation of the torque applied to the dipole dotted into its displacement change, which is equal to minus the integral from initial to final of the dipole crossed with the electric field dotted into d theta vector. Now we need to actually use our coordinate system to calculate the look direction of these vectors for us so that we can calculate this integral. So delta u is going to be minus. I am integrating this from an orientation of pi over 2 when it's perpendicular to, to the electric field, to when the dipole's at the arbitrary angle theta. The magnitude of P cross E is P E sine theta. And by the right hand rule, when you cross P into E, your thumb points out of the page, which is in the k hat direction. This is dotted into D theta which as I said a minute ago is pointed in the minus k hat direction because it's going clockwise not counterclockwise. Now P and E are constants in the problem so we can pull out the magnitude of the electric field and we can pull out the dipole moment its magnitude. So we got minus P and E k dotted into a minus k is minus 1. That makes this a plus. And then we have the integral of pi over 2 to theta sine theta d theta. Well, the integral of sine theta d theta is negative cosine theta. So we got minus p e cosine theta evaluated from pi over 2 to theta. So the change in our potential energy, which is our potential energy at theta, minus our potential energy when we're at pi over 2, is equal to minus the potential in, I'm sorry, minus the dipole moment times the electric field times the cosine of theta. Minus a minus makes a plus the dipole moment times the electric field times the cosine of pi over 2. 
Well, we know that the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Let our zero potential energy reference be at theta equal pi over 2. That is, let that be zero. That's purely arbitrary. Only change in potential energy has meaning. But if we do that, then we make our formula much like we did with gravity by letting y equal zero be our potential energy when we were starting out in physics one. We get that this u theta can now just be called u and it's minus p times z e times the cosine of theta. Or more compactly, it's minus p vector dotted e vector. So take the dot product between the dipole moment and the electric field and you have calculated the potential energy that the dipole has in the electric field. Of course, given that we have that zero potential energy reference point. A very, very useful little formula to know. Alright, that finishes this video.